benvenuti. Thank you so much for coming. Aren't we a lovely group today? Yes. yes. Let me rephrase that. Aren't I lovely? I am here today to address you about Commedia dell'arte, a form of comic theater born in the Italian Renaissance. I am going to speak to you about what was so new and... I and my assistants are going to talk to you about what was so new and different about Commedia dell'arte. We are going to introduce you to some of the comic characters and the comic situations, and we are going to show you the masks. Now, some of you perhaps have never heard of Commedia dell'arte, while others perhaps have heard about the famous characters such as Arlecchino, Pantalone, Scappino, Colombina, and the others. But what was really important about Commedia dell'arte is that it was the modern birthplace, that is, the birthplace of acting as a profession, of the masks or fixed types, repeated play after play after play, of improvisation as a comic technique, and perhaps most importantly, of the actress, of the woman on stage. You are going to see a description of all of these innovations here today. And so let us begin first with a presentation, a little preview of the masks you are going to meet in the course of this presentation. First, there is the Zanni, a country yokel lost in the big city, vulgar, obscene, and always hungry. Next, you are going to meet Pantalone, a Venetian, rich Venetian merchant, avaricious, dyspeptic, and lecherous. Then you are going to meet the second Zanni, most famously known as Arlecchino, alternately sly and stupid, charming and obnoxious, everybody's favorite imbecile. And next you'll, me you'll meet the Capitano, a foreign soldier stationed in Italy. Arrogant, swaggering, boastful, and ultimately chicken hearted. <laughs> now, also in Commedia, there are the lovers, male and female, and this is where actresses for the first time get up on stage and begin performing. Now, the actresses, however, did not wear masks. Why not? Well, because an actress is a beautiful thing to look at, no? So who would want to cover a pretty face with a mask? No, actresses did not wear masks. However, there were dozens and dozens of other masks in Commedia also. For example, Trufaldino. There was Pedrolino, Brighella, Tartaglia, Mezzettino, Stentarello, Brigante, Il Sergente, and Gian Burgolo. But perhaps no mask was more beloved than that of the scintillating and brilliant <coughs> academic, the Dottore who was the toast of every party and a particular favorite of the ladies for his charming and witty tongue. So, let's get on to the point. What was new about Commedia dell'arte? Basically, there was four innovations. Quattro! Four. 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 No, number one, professionalization. Professionalization. Professionalism. Number two, the mask what some people might call the fixed types. Fixed types. What others might call the stock characters. <laughs> stock characters. And third, improvisation as a comic technique, a particularly dear tradition here in Chicago because we are so proud of our great history of comic improvisation as seen in Second City, Del Close, Improv Olympic, and so on and so on ad infinitum. Improviso! And lastly, women on stage. This was the truly critical development. Because this was the beginning of citizenship for women. Let's 
examine these points one by one. First of all, professionalization, acting as an honest trade. Now, in order to understand what we mean by professionalization, let's examine our terminology, as any good intellectual examination and discourse must do. Let's take apart the terminology piece by piece as though we were doing surgery on an anatomy. First, commedia dell'arte. Commedia dell'arte. Commedia. Commedia. What does commedia mean? It means comedy. comedy. I was going to say that. Comedy. I was going to say that. But what does comedy mean? <laughs> That's comedy. Okay, okay. It means something funny. Very good. But let's really think about it. After all, what does comedy consist of? What, for example, is the difference between comedy and tragedy? It's very simple, really. Tragedy begins happily and ends unhappily. Whereas comedy, by contrast, begins unhappily and ends happily. It begins with a problem and ends with a solution. Starts bad, ends good. Bad, 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 good, bad, good, Select, ornate, beautiful, magnificent, classical, high flown, and lyrical. Is this a dagger that I see before me? <laughs> Thus, with imagined wing, our swift scene flies in motion of no less celerity than that of thought. Whereas comic language is much more colloquial, more or less taken from the registers of language that we and you and I and even me might use in the course of a normal day. Hey, hey, what you doing? How you doing? I'm doing great, you. Hey, not much going on. Bah! Oh! <laughs> hey, what's that there behind you? <laughs> oh! <laughs> Say hi to your mother. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that is not important. What's important is the second component of the equation, del arte. Uh, what does this word mean, arte? Uh, well, to the ignorant, it might be thought to mean art, <laughs> as in painting. Sculptor, architecture, but no, 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 the merchants, guild. The pharmacists, guild. The wool workers, guild. The silk workers, guild. The butchers, the blacksmiths, the bakers, guild, guild, guild. Bobby, what does this mean? This means that acting for the first time gained the prestige and status equal to any other. Can you say that again? Acting as a profession had prestige and status equal to any other. Is that right? <laughs> Acting as a profession gained a prestige and status equal to any other. <laughs> well, <laughs> if it weren't for this, we wouldn't have today our Steppenwolfs, our looking glasses, our uh, red moons, and runny ba R Remy Bumpos. No, 1546 is the date of the first professional acting company contract. And it's very much in prototype form, the kind of contract that you might find establishing an acting company today. This contract has five critical articles to it. Article number one is that there shall be a boss. A boss. A boss. 
a person in charge to whom the others are responsible as sort of a director or a producer who demonstrates who distributes the roles and the responsibilities among the company. The second article of this contract is the establishment of a health care plan. Oh. <laughs> if one member of the company should get sick, <laughs> 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 It's a sensitive issue. No, no. Okay, okay. You get the idea. The third article of the contract establish a common purse where all income accumulated during the course of the contractual year would go into and be held in this common purse. Ah, and at the end of this contractual year, those monies would be dispersed equally among all the members of the company. The fourth point of the contract, if any member of the company should drop out during the course of the year, they lose all right to any accumulated profits. And not only that, but they actually have to pay damages hey! to the up. They actually have to pay damages. Ah! What's the problem now? You can't say that. There's children no, in damages to the no! They have to pay damages. No! Ah. Then what can I say? Darn. 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 They had to pay darnages to the other members of the company. And not only that, they actually had to pay darnages to the impresario who had contracted them to work and who had been cheated out of its luck by having no member of the company drop out. And then, the, the last article in the contract was the communal purchase of a horse. <laughs> <laughs> or an ass. <laughs> Whose job it will be to carry the co uh, props, costumes, and equipment from city to city. Now, this contract appears in 1546. By 1560, we begin to see in these contracts the names of women. This is a revolutionary development because the other trade organizations did not have women members. Acting was really the first place. Pasta! You already did that, guys. Okay. This is the first step of citizenship for women in the modern world. It's a revolutionary development, even bigger than theater, if such a thing is possible. So, let me go on here. Now, are you sick of hearing me talk yet? Yes! yes. <laughs> okay, then let's get on to the action. Let's put the actors to work. Let's meet the masks. <laughs> but first, let's talk a little bit more about the history of the masks, okay? After all, what is a mask? And what does a mask do? Masks go back to the very mists of human history. In the caves in southern France and northern Spain, the first graphic evidence of human habitation of prehistoric man. Those figures, what are they doing? They're seen wearing masks and dressed in costumes. Masks are a virtually global, universal human phenomenon from the most primitive cultures to the most sophisticated. Masks are used to ward off evil in Asia. They are used in Africa to embody spiritual values. They are death masks found in the northern wastes of Europe. They can be, come from Bali and be silly clown characters. They can come from Africa and evoke animal spirits or come from Austria and evoke animal spirits. They also come from British Columbia where they are spokesmen for divine entities. Uh, they are used in Paris in avant-garde theater. They are used in Mexico for fun, uh, enjoyable festivals. They're used in no theater in Japan in festivals in Turkey. They're used in all kinds of theatrical manifestations of all the continents of the world. And they're also used historically in Roman comedy. And there's a famous neutral mask. And here are the commedia masks, which for us represent the maximum evolutionary development with perhaps the highest form of mask of all. Not necessarily Arlecchino, but the dottore. <laughs> Very good. But, what do masks 
do. Yes. Well. What does a mask do? Masks conceal and reveal. Masks allow inner tensions, inner values, inner spiritual invisible qualities within a human being to come out and manifest themselves. Masks allow people to become divinities. They allow people to become spokesmen for eternal values and for the, uh, they allow them to speak in the voice of God. They allow children to become adults. They allow men to become animals. They allow men to become women, for example. And not only that, but there are also ways in which there are masks that allow people the most deep and hidden recesses of our character the parts that we normally, in the course of a normal year, prefer to ignore and not think about them, to pretend that they don't exist. They allow these qualities to be manifested and come up through our intestines and out of our mouth, through the mask, and to be manifested in all their horror, in all their terror, and the most violent and hateful qualities of a human being. Things wolf-like qualities that we normally don't wish to think about. <laughs> And they allow us to be released and to take over running mad through the city. And <laughs> I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. Sure. They allow the animal into us to emerge and to attack and to eat and to bite and to get. Supposed to look both ways before you cross the street. <laughs> I'm the wittiest.
the Turks in Istanbul. I have decapitated the emperor of Ethiopia, and I have devoured the nomads of the eastern Himalayas, devouring each individual little toenail. Ooh. I'm as big as a bull, as strong as steel. I am a complete machine of defense and destruction. Did you hear something? <laughs> Was there something, in, uh, there's something in the distance? Hello? Is there someone there? Hello? I didn't mean it. <laughs> you was, was making it up. <laughs> It's my birthday, my cake. No, it's my birthday. No, 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 no. My birthday. But, but look, me, it's my birthday. No, 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 no. My birthday, I cut the cake. Say a 
Panovaccio, a scenario began with this action. Brighella and Tartaglia bump into each other in the street. Tartaglia tells Brighella that his master has just arrived from Verona. As you can see, now, is that it? That's it. As you can see, this gives very little information. If the actors simply execute what they see on the page, it might look like this. Hey, Tartaglia. Hey, Brigella. What's up? Oh, my master's in from Verona. We're going to go meet him. Cool. <laughs> Check you later. Gotcha. <laughs> if, however, you put this same scene description in the hands of two skilled comedia actors, who know how to weave into it Lotsi and comic numbers, it might instead look like this. What am I gonna do? <laughs> I'm down to my last nickel. <laughs> now I could put it in the bank. Nah, I think I'll get something to eat. <laughs> and what I'll get to eat is my favorite food. <laughs> it's big and it's round. It's a what we like to call mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Now, just where could I find one? Oh, no, that's candy store. Oh, no, that's a pastry shop. Oh, well, there's got to be a place around here somewhere. My master's in from B B Verona. I'm going to meet him. <gasps> oh, I'm late. <laughs> I'd better go. <laughs> oh. Did you see that? He hit me. Why, you ignoramus? What a so much where you going? Oh, oh, not an ignoramus, you big. Baboon? But, hey, uh, oh, baboon? Mm -hmm. Why, you're the one that's a moron! A oh, moron? Why, you nincompoop! Nincompoop? Yeah. Uh, mm. I don't even know what that means, but it sounds bad. <laughs> well, you're, you're a piece of, of vermin. Uh, you think I'm a... Vermin? Vermin! Thank you. <laughs> that sounds like my friend Tartaglia. That sounds like Brigella. Tartaglia! using professional actors, masks, lotsi, that allows them to improvise. For example, let's take an example of a possible canovaccio. So now, Brigante explains his scheme to Pantalone. Pantalone, doubtful, agrees to meet Brigante's partner, the Capitano. <coughs> Brigante tells Arlecchino to send Capitano to Pantalone's house. 
Arlecchino tells Capitano to find Pantalone. Capitano visits Pantalone to describe his scheme. A fight ensues. The captain is wounded. The doctor arrives to operate on the Capitano and saves the day. Now let's see what our actors do to bring that situation to life. Come back. 
to Venice. In Venice, the money gets bigger, 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 bigger. The cup down, and my mouth, and here, and the thing goes there. I've got a dog tick, I've got some dick, dick, horses, I've got a little money, 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 just walking down the street. Seems unlikely, no? Wow. Dunk, dunk, dunk. Oh. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> oh. Ah. Uh, Capitano. Who are you? Well, uh, we were just, I, I, uh, I, I'm Alecchino. Alecchino? Yes? What do you want? to Pantaloni's house uh, mm -hmm. because Brigante wants you uh, to talk to him about uh, something, 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 something with a plan about a war mm -hmm. and then I get the money. War? Uh, yeah, I guess so. Pantaloni, the money? Yes. Brigante, the war? Yes. Well, I'll do it. Huh. My work is done. Mm. The war. The war, the plan is underway! The war! Pantalone. <laughs> boom, 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 boom! Ah. Oh. What is it? I'm trying to get some sleep. Must be that old spark left something. <laughs> what is it? Oh. Who are you? Capitano Spavento di Medina. 
but I'd appreciate it if you would just uh, spavoon yourself. I've terrorized the Turks in Istanbul. I've decapitated the emperor of Ethiopia. I have eaten the little nomads in the eastern Himalayas. Eating every last toenail. I'm big as a bull, as strong as steel. I'm a machine of complete destruction and defense. Well, that's quite an impressive resume, but we're not actually hiring at the moment, and so this is disgusting around the eating part. But, uh, actually, if you could come back tomorrow, I'd be... Let me convince you of the plan. The plan? I, I don't want to know about a plan. I'm trying oh, to get you bed. That's because you've never seen the beauty of war. pillaging the villages. You then take the children and women and take them out no, of the... Me, stop! No! Oh, why not? Ah, ah, oh, 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 yeah! Oh, yeah! Oh, Domestic meatball 
it's okay, we're available to answer questions, which is part of the program. If anybody would like to ask anything, yes. Well, Comedia, uh, uh, Servant of Two Masters is very interesting. It's probably the most co uh, famous Comedia play of all time. And it was written by an author who wanted to reform Comedia dell'arte and reintroduce written parts. When? Uh, it, that was dated about 1745. And it's funny because it was an attempt to sort of close the door on the vulgarity and excesses of, of plays written without scripts. Um, but it, instead, it's become the most famous Comedia dell'arte play of all. Play of all. They did that. Uh, There's an Italian company that did it in on Navy Pier at Shakespeare Rep last year. And when when did the uh, Comedia dell'arte uh, start? And what who was the best representative? Well, there was all kinds. Of, it really began in the middle of the 16th century. And uh, numerous companies grew up uh, more or less simultaneously. One of the most famous was a company called the Gelosi, run by a man named Francesco Andreini and his wife, Isabella Andreini, who became a, a European-wide famous actress. And these people were hired by the most important uh, princely courts. And she was, she was particularly famous for making the role of actress be a respectable and admired uh, profession. She was very literate. and. She brought uh, lyric poetry up onto the stage because most of the men were running around doing jokes of this nature. <laughs> yes? How lucrative was it to be an actor? Well, it was, it depended on your level of success because there were star actors who were traded back and forth between Renaissance courts like the way ball players are today, who were really in demand. And, um, uh, the Italian comedy went to the court, uh, the royal court in Paris, and was the main theatrical entertainment there for several hundred years. And when Moliere, exam for example, was doing his comedies at the court in Paris, Moliere had to do his plays like on the Monday and Tuesday nights because it was the Italian comedians who were doing the nights that people really went out to the theater. But at the same time, there were also companies that were, you know, dragging their stuff from city to city, just setting it up outside in piazzas on platforms and doing the best they could. Yeah? How would a person become an actor back then? Did they just try out and do that this? Well, I, I, you know, what a part of, that's an interesting question. And because acting mixed, mixed all different classes together, right? There was, there was people who were beggars, who were talented acrobats, who aspired to move up to become members of acting companies. And then there was also literate people, even people with noble blood, who wrote comedies, who became fascinated by being an actor and sort of socially lowered themselves to join acting companies. But generally speaking, it was something that came up through families. Um, that was basically how the guild system was set up. If your father was in the business, you were likely to move into that business too. Yeah. I'm extremely sorry that's all the time we have.